I'm uh, happy to be here to share uh, our first results on the uh, experience with FAPI PETs in patients with various cancer. So I think uh, I thank uh, VG Oncology to give me the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about that in this uh, webinar and also to uh, present the data that was uh, reported here at AACR meeting. So we will we'll report here our preliminary results of an exploratory study uh, conducted at UCLA in 15 patients that all had a FAPI PET scan before resection of their cancer by surgery. Let me describe a little bit what is FAPI PET. FAP stands for fibroblast activated protein. And it is highly overexpressed or activated in the activated fibroblast. So it is not cancer specific, but as you may be aware, around the cancer cells and around the cancer lesions, there is a tumor microenvironment with a lot of fibroblasts. And the main cells of the tumor microenvironment, the stroma as well, uh, is the cancer-associated fibroblasts. And these cancer-associated fibroblasts, they have a lot of FAB protein at their surface. So FAB is a good marker of this activated cancer-associated fibroblasts. And now we have new uh, radiopharmaceuticals, a radioactive molecule that can bind to the FAB target. It is called FAPI, so it stands for FAB inhibitors, and you can label it with uh, radionuclei to do imaging, such as PET imaging, gallium-68, fluor-18, or maybe in the future, someone will be able to prove that it has some efficacy with the, with the radionuclide used for therapy, such as a beta emitter, I don't know, lutetium or actinium with an alpha emitter, uh, a radioisotope that is used for therapy and, and kills the cell around. So that would be the ultimate goal. First, let's look at the imaging. That's what we're doing here in this exploratory study. And the first step when you have a new imaging tool specific for a target is to make sure that what you see in the scan or on the scan is actually what is reflected and what is in the tumor. So we selected patients who were scheduled to undergo surgery for their cancer, various cancer types. Um, these included pancreas cancer, um, esophageal cancer, rectal cancer. We, we have a, it was a basket kind of indication. FAP is a pan cancer tracer. It is not specific for one tumor type or another. Of course, there are some tumor types that have more fibroblast recruitment, that have more, um, that lead to a more stromal reaction, but it is not specific to a tumor type, it is just specific for the activated fibroblasts that are around the cancer. So these patients were scheduled to undergo surgery. They underwent first one fat PET scan uh, that we did here at UCLA. And then we compared the fat PET signal as measured with the SUV to the fat IHC staining by immunohistochemistry. So basically the level of the fat protein expression as seen on the histopathology, uh, histopathology analysis. We compared the two and what we found is that as expected, the FAPI SUV PET signal is highly correlated with the FAP expression level as assessed by immunohistochemistry. So basically, when you see a strong signal on the FAPI PET, it means there is a lot of FAP expression at this place. So this needs to be shown, it was expected, but it's still nice to have the data in real. Uh, what I can point out is these studies are ongoing. We're doing more and more patients. So maybe within the next years, we'll have uh, more data to show. And we, um, we're doing something different that has been done so far in Europe, mainly in Germany where the, and in China as well. We're using this uh, FAP, FAPI PET imaging agents in more very advanced patients with multimetastatic uh, disease. Here, because patients were scheduled uh, for surgery, we are at a much earlier stage of the disease. It is really uh, many patients were non-metastatic or just in the regional lymph nodes around. So it is definitely not the same population that has been initially reported in the early experience from Germany and China. It is really much earlier stage of cancer. So we have interesting data on that. Uh, we still see that the, the primary tumor 
diets have usually a, a high um, fappy pet uptake, which is created with the activation of all the cancer-associated fibroblasts. Um, and it is a little bit less clear in the first regional lymph node uh, metastasis, where it seems that the, the fappy uptake is a bit lower and the fap expression by IHC is also lower. So further studies will, will show how to implement FAP at which stage, FAP imaging agents. And I think the main indication will be mostly for advanced multimetastatic uh, cancer patients where you have more stronger reaction, more aggressiveness of the disease. But there may be a role also at early stage, you know, especially when you have other imaging modalities that do not perform well for staging. Uh, you can imaging, um, for example, the, the brain with a lot of background FDG uptake. You can imagine the head and neck cancer with a lot of uh, you know, saliva and mucosa FDG uptake. Um, you can have several indications where um, FDG is not performing well and where a FAP, FAP pet can, can play a good role even at earlier stage. But that's just a preliminary study, and I really look forward to see the, the results of the next patient we're doing. So I, I hope you will be able to, to look at this uh, data, these posters, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the studies. Thank you very much. Have a good day.